Hello dear students, uh, in this uh, video I will be going to uh, explain uh, about two things in particular. First thing is uh, about uh, inverse Z transform. So what are the different methods of finding uh, inverse Z transform? In particular, uh, we will uh, we'll, uh, quickly uh, solve some problems uh, using two methods. Uh, the first method is long division method and uh, the second method is uh, is uh, partial fraction uh, expansion method so without uh, explaining much uh, theory i'll be uh, solving some problems and with the help of that problems will be uh, will be understanding uh, these two methods of finding inverse as a transform so that is uh, the first uh, agenda and uh, the second uh, agenda is to uh, is to find the response or analysis of analysis of discrete systems so a discrete system can be uh, represented by using something called as difference equation so we'll quickly see what is uh, difference equation and how to analyze uh, a discrete system using uh, using is a transform using is a transform so this is the uh, two things that we are going to discuss uh, in this particular video so first we will uh, move into the uh, inverse is a transform using uh, long division method so the first one is uh, long division method which is a very easy method uh, you just need to understand few concepts so long division method so uh, so just a recap of what is uh, is a transform and inverse a transform so if you have a discrete time signal x of n the equivalent the is uh, transform uh, is given by or is represented by capital x of z so this x of z uh, is nothing but capital x of z is nothing but summation uh, n is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n the discrete time signal times z raised to minus n now if you are provided with this x of z so uh, inverse is a transform is so if you are given with this uh, x of z inverse is a transform is to find the the discrete time signal x of n which is actually the reverse operation okay so uh, is a transform is if you are given with the discrete time signal how to find the is a transform of the signal is uh, the forward operation and the reverse operation is if you are provided with the is a transform how to find the the discrete time signal so one of the basic method is is long division method so let's try to understand the long division method with the help of an example so uh, example suppose uh, you are given with uh, an is a transform x of z equal to z square plus 2 is it divided by is it cube minus 3 is it square plus 4 is it plus 1 and along with the is it transform we need to mention the ROC and ROC is given as magnitude of is it greater than 1 remember that rocs are always rocs in set transform are always uh, 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 either outside uh, a circle or inside a circle and so on and uh, uh, one more property of roc is uh, it cannot contain the poles of the system okay so uh, if for example suppose uh, you have a transfer function like this and from this transfer function maybe you can find the poles 
and from the ROC I can understand that z is equal to 1 is a pole so z is equal to 1 is a solution of this probably the largest pole and uh, suppose uh, is it equal to 1 uh, is uh, is the largest pole here so this is corresponding to is it equal to 1 and uh, the ROC of uh, of this transfer function is actually outside the outside the circle of uh, greatest pole okay so this is the region of convergence for this uh, is a transform signal so from the ROC so this is the critical part from the ROC you you will be able to uh, understand whether the given signal is a causal signal or a anti-causal signal so if the ROC is outside of some circle then the signal is a causal signal so here since Z is greater than greater than 1 uh, it is actually a causal signal so the the reason is that suppose the, there are multiple poles so uh, here you need to factorize and find the poles but for the moment uh, let's consider that the poles are uh, one pole is at uh, Z is equal to 1 another pole is somewhere uh, inside here the third pole is somewhere inside here something like this okay and uh, uh, so let's say this is uh, this is uh, is it equal to a and this is it equal to b okay so the, so there is some value but uh, you need to factorize and find those values okay so so also uh, so what is the region of convergence due to is it equal to b so region of convergence due to this pole since the signal is causal it will be outside the circle right so it will be outside the circle now what will be the roc due to z equal to 1 sorry z equal to a it will be outside the circle and what will be the roc due to z equal to 1 this is outside the unit circle okay so what will be the combined roc so combined ROC is uh, the the intersection region. Okay, so uh, so it will uh, even though uh, the ROC due to is equal to B is just outside this interior circle, the intersection of those ROCs will be will be this region. Okay, so that's why I, I said that uh, for uh, is it greater than one. Uh, one will be the the greatest pole higher uh, the highest pole and uh, the signal is a causal signal so if if it is a anti causal signal if it was an anti causal signal then 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 what would be the case suppose uh, there are three poles like that the same case you consider and uh, suppose the signal is anti-causal so there are three poles one pole due to z equal to b the interior one the second pole due to z equal to a and the third pole due to z equal to z equal to one okay now for anti-causal signals the roc will be inside of inside of uh inside of some circle okay so so what are the roc regions so due to uh, z equal to 1 it is inside so it is inside the inside the unit circle okay so suppose this is uh, z equal to 1 this is corresponding to z equal to 1 so roc due to the pole z equal to 1 is inside the unit circle ROC due to Z equal to A will be inside the circle of radius uh, A. ROC due to pole B, which is much uh, inside A, will be uh, inside the small circle uh, Z equal to B. So, so, what will be the common intersection? The common intersection will be 
just inside the circle of radius b. So for this question, uh, if the ROC is less than the smallest pole, then you can understand that this signal x of n corresponding to this x of z is an anti-causal signal. Okay. Fine. So let me ask you uh, one more thing which will be uh, helpful for you. Suppose you are given that ROC is between A and 1. Suppose uh, in this question, in this question, uh, suppose ROC is uh, ROC is mentioned as he said which is uh, less than 1 but uh, suppose it is greater than A okay so so suppose it is given that the ROC is this so so what you need to check is under what condition you can you can uh, get this region as the intersection okay so this region can be obtained only if uh, the at pole uh, 1 you need to have an anti-causal signal at pole a you need to have a causal signal and at b also you need to have a you need to have a causal signal okay so i'll repeat this once again so this is an important concept. Suppose ROC is defined as a as a strip between two two circles. So you need to find the intersection. Okay. So this will be intersection if uh, ROC is inside of inside of uh, uh, inside of a circle of unity radius. Uh, outside of a circle of uh, uh, circle of radius A. And ROC is outside of circle of radius B. This is possible if the signal corresponding to pole uh, 1 is anti-causal. At A and B, we need it to be causals, causal signal. So this is uh, particularly required in, in the partial fraction expansion case. I just ex explained uh, 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 here. Okay. So, so now coming to the long division method. Okay, so so this is the relation of uh, uh, ROC to uh, the signal being causal, anti-causal, and so on. Okay, so let's uh, now focus on this question. So this question, we understood that uh, the signal is a is a causal signal. Now for causal signal. Uh, you just remember this for causal signal we need to write the the polynomials in descending order and for anti-causal signal we need to write in ascending order okay so you just remember a and a so for anti-causal signal anti-causal signal we need to write the the polynomials in in ascending order of powers okay and for causal signal we need to write in the descending order in this case we have found out that it is a causal signal so we need to write it in the descending order which is the case now it is in the descending order of powers of z so this is correct if the question was uh, uh, of anti causal signal you need to write in the ascending order so now i am talking about the <coughs> long division method so now let me come to the long division so I'll write once again what is x of z. So x of z was uh, z square plus 2 z divided by z square plus 2 z divided by z cube minus 3 z square plus 4 z plus 1. And ROC is given as Z greater than 1. So it is causal signal. So we need to write it in descending order. That is fine. Then you do the long division. So Z square plus 2 Z divided by Z cube 
माइनस थ्री इज एट स्क्वायर प्लस फोर इज एट प्लस वन सो बाई डिवाइडिंग सो द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन विल बी सो यू नीड टू गेट इज एट स्क्वायर एज द फर्स्ट टर्म सो इफ यू नीड टू गेट इज एट स्क्वायर एज द फर्स्ट टर्म यू नीड टू मल्टीप्लाई इट विथ इज एट रेज टू माइनस वन सो इफ यू मल्टीप्लाई दिस विथ इज एट रेज टू माइनस वन इट बिकम्स इज एट स्क्वायर माइनस थ्री इज एड प्लस फोर प्लस इज एट रेज टू माइनस वन and by subtracting this becomes zero plus two is said minus of minus three is said becomes five is said minus four minus is said inverse and now in order to get five is said so you need to multiply with five is said raised to minus two so by multiplying this with 5 is at raised to minus 2 it becomes 5 is at minus 15 plus 20 is at raised to minus 1 plus 5 is at raised to minus 2 so this you can subtract and you will get it as 11 minus 21 is at raised to minus 1 minus 5 is at raised to minus 2 Now the next quotient term will be plus eleven is at raised to minus three, and you need to continue this at least till till four uh, four coefficients are obtained. Okay, plus etc. And so you can write this x of is at as. Now I can write this x of is at as is at raised to minus one. Plus five is at raised to minus two. Plus eleven is at raised to minus three. Plus twelve is at raised to minus four. Plus etc. Okay, so uh, by comparing this to the the definition, uh, we can understand that x of n. x of n equal to so the coefficient corresponding to is at raised to minus one is uh, the the signal corresponding to n is equal to one right so it is one five eleven twelve so is at raised to uh, the coefficient corresponding to is at raised to zero is uh, zero so this is zero one five eleven twelve etc. so see so see that this is a causal signal okay fine so this is a long division method uh, in uh, in a nutshell uh, if you are given with the transfer function with the roc understand that this is a causal signal or anti causal signal if it is a uh, causal signal write it, it in the descending powers of z if it is an anti causal signal write in the ascending powers of z and do the long division get the quotient and write the write the signal so the problem with long division method is we cannot get the the generalized formula okay so for some cases uh, we may be uh, we may be able to find a finite signal but that is not the general case okay so that is about long division method now let me quickly talk about the the partial fraction expansion method which is uh, the most commonly uh, used method fraction for partial fraction method so i'll i'll quickly tell uh, the the key idea behind partial fraction method so in partial fraction method is uh, we are given with uh, x of z and we will try to get x of z as as uh, terms with partial fraction which is having Uh, some form something like this some uh, constant c1 into z by z minus uh, some p1 plus c2 z by z minus p2 plus 
so you you know how to take the partial fraction expansion set by p set minus p3 i mean maybe p2 the whole square uh, if you have one more uh, so you have c4 e set by e set minus p2 the whole whole raised to cube so uh, so if you get in this form then we are trying to find the uh, inverse set transform okay so uh, so we'll uh, see uh, how to do this uh, with an example but you just need to understand that you need to understand some of the is a transfer so if uh, so i'll quickly write here is a transform and uh, it's a transform of some of the signals which are uh, commonly used and uh, the inverse a transform here so uh, in the inverse set transform there are uh, there are two cases two cases case 1 uh, is is causal and case 2 is anti causal <coughs> so uh, so we know uh, the is a uh, inverse set transform of a constant suppose a0 is uh, is is a transform the inverse set transform is uh, uh, a0 del of n whether it is causal or anti causal del of n for example uh, if it is uh, some constant so if there is uh, a constant c0 c0 plus c1 so if you take the inverse set transform of c0 it is c0 del of n <coughs> so that is uh, the first thing second thing is uh, the important one e set by e set minus 1 it is u of n it is if it is causal and if it is anti causal it is minus of u of minus n minus 1 so uh, if e set by e set minus 1 if it is a causal signal the inverse set transform is u of n and if it is an anti causal signal it is minus of u of minus n minus 1 so whether it is a causal signal or a anti causal signal can be can be confirmed from the roc of the roc of this e set transform third is e set by e set minus a set e set by e set minus a is a raised to n u of n for causal signal and for anti causal case it is a raised to n minus of u of minus n minus 1 so for causal case it is u of n anti causal case it is minus u of minus n minus 1 so if you remember in our class we have we have shown that the is a transform of u of n and u minus of u of minus n minus 1 are the same the only difference is in the roc now the fourth one is set by is set minus a the whole square it is uh, a raised to n n into u of n and for anti causal case it is a minus of a raised to n n u of minus n minus 1 now i'll tell one more thing is set by is set minus a the whole cube it is uh, a raised to n n into n minus 1 into u of n for anti causal case it will be minus of a raised to n n into n minus 1 into u of minus n minus 1 okay so this much is required for uh, for finding the inverse set transform using partial fraction expansion method so uh, will understand this by solving a question question example find the inverse set transform of x of z equal to z inverse 
divided by 3 minus 4 Z inverse plus Z raised to minus 2 4 for the ROC ROC is a greater than 1 so you are provided with the it's a transform as said inverse divided by 3 plus 4 is a raised to minus 2 plus a raised 4 is a raised to minus 1 plus a raised to minus 2 and ROC being is a greater than a 1 so what you can observe is since ROC is greater than 1 it is uh, a causal signal and uh, and while taking the inverse transform, we need to be we need to be careful. So, so what you need to do is you need to write uh, all these z inverse into uh, z raised to positive powers of z. So x of z can be written as z inverse can be written as one by z and one by three minus four by z plus one by z square. Okay, so you can uh, cross multiply this and uh, maybe you can write this as so ultimately this becomes Z divided by 3 Z square minus 4 Z plus 1 so you can you can uh, cross multiply and check this. Now, now this is an important step. So x of z equal to z divided by 3 z square minus 4 z plus 1. So in partial fraction expansion method, you need to get in some of these forms, something like this z by z, z minus a. You need to get in this form. So what you what you need to do is you need to write this as x of z divided by z. And then take the partial fraction. So x of z divided by z becomes 1 by 3 z square minus 4 z, sorry, 3 z three square minus 4 z plus 1. And now you need to take the, the partial fraction expansion. So this maybe can be written as 1 by 3 can be taken outside z square minus 4 by 3 z plus 1 by 3. And uh, this can be factorized as 1 by 3. Uh, 1 by 3 z minus 1 and z minus 1 by 3 right and this can be partial fraction so x of z by z can be written as uh, as uh, a by z minus 1 plus b by z minus 1 by 3 and you can find this uh, a and b so you'll get this uh, a as uh, 1 by 2 this is 1 by 2 and b is minus 1 by 2 so this is an important step you need to write it in x of z by z form so that you will get some form something like z by z minus 1 okay so x of z by z is uh, so I'll write it once again here x of z by z it, it becomes uh, half by z minus 1 minus half by z minus 1 by 3. So that you can write this x of z now as x of z as 1 by 2 z by z minus 1 minus 1 by 2 z minus z by z minus 1 by 3 so now you have the form of z by z minus 1 and z by uh, z minus 3 now you can take the uh, inverse z transform so using the uh, inverse z transform that 
uh, I have shown. So by taking inverse set transform, we'll get x of n as. So remember, he, in here you need to uh, remember that we have the signal to be causal at both pole locations. Okay, then only we'll get uh, the is a transform sorry as ROC as greater than one so here we have two poles right which are the poles so there are two poles one pole it is it equal to one so so here is one pole and another pole is at is it equal to one by three only if the signal is causal at both pole locations then only the ROC will be is it greater than one okay so at both pole locations it is it is causal so because of that we can write this as half what is the inverse transform of causal z by z minus one it is u of n minus half inverse transform z by z minus one by three is one by three raised to n u of n since it is causal Okay, so this is the answer. Now suppose the question was, so let me, so suppose instead of is it greater than one, if the question was is it less than one by three, then what would have been the answer? Since is it less than one by three, that means that is only possible if the signal is anti-causal at is it equal to one and is it equal to one by three, then only it will be both interior of the circles so that the intersection becomes z less than 1 by 3. So if z less than 1 by 3 then the answer would be it would be both anti causal at z at equal to 1 and z equal to 1 by 3. So then the answer would be x of n is equal to 1 by 2 minus of u of minus n minus 1 plus half 1 by 3 raised to n minus sorry yeah minus n minus get cancelled so it becomes plus u of minus n minus 1 so this is the case when roc is uh, less than 1 by 3 okay now let me ask uh, ask you one more case the third case where roc is between between 1 by 3 and 1 if the ROC is between these two regions, it is possible only if only if uh, the signal is is causal at one by three. Remember, it is causal at one by three and anti-causal at one. So, for is it between is it between one and one by three? It is so we require it the signal to be causal corresponding to the pole location at 1 by 3 because it is outside the circle and it is required to be anti causal for the pole at, at 1. So x of n will be anti causal at 1, so it is half or minus half u of minus n minus 1 and causal at the at the pole corresponding to 1 by 3. So it is minus half 1 by 3 raised to n u of n. So this is the inverse transform if ROC is this. So the summary is depending upon the ROC, you need to be you need to be deciding the inverse transform carefully. So that is uh, inverse transform using ROC. Now we coming coming to the the analysis of difference equation using is a transform. So analysis using is a transform. So we'll quickly uh, do that with the help of an example. If you know is a transform and inverse a transform, this is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah. So the question is uh, determine the impulse response. Of the system described by difference equation using is a transform so so 
you need to be familiar with something called as difference equation. So I am writing a difference equation y of n minus 3 y of n minus 1 minus 4 y of n minus 2 equal to x of n plus 2 x of n minus 1. So the question is to find the impulse response of the system which is defined by this, this difference equation. So difference equation is uh, analogous to differential equation uh, in continuous case. So what you need to do is, uh, you need to find the, the transfer function in uh, Z domain. So what is uh, the transfer function? Transfer function is, uh, is given by y of Z divided by x of z where y of z is the is a transform of output and x of z is the is a transform of input so in order to yeah so this is actually h of z so uh, in other words we can say that if x of z equal to 1 x of z equal to 1 means it is an impulse input for x of z equal to 1 the output is h of z which is the impulse response. So if you want to find, uh, it's a transform of impulse response. So if you want to find the impulse response, you need to take the inverse transform of H of Z to get the impulse response. So uh, in this question, what you need to do is take the Z transform. So take Z transform. By taking Z transform, we'll get uh, Y of Z minus 3 so it's a transform of uh, y of n minus 1 is z inverse y of z with the zero initial condition so if there are initial conditions then there are some more terms but with zero initial conditions uh, it is z inverse y of z minus 4 z raised to minus 2 y of z equal to x of z plus 2 is at raised to minus 1 x of z okay so uh, so by combining y of z and x of z together we can write uh, y of z divided by x of z which is nothing but h of z h of z as so this is 1 plus 2 is at raised to minus 1 divided by 1 minus 3 is at inverse minus 4 is at raised to minus 2 okay so this is h of z uh, so by writing uh, in positive powers of z it becomes z into z plus 2 divided by z square minus 3 z minus 4 Okay, so this is uh, h of z. Now what the question is to find h of n. So in order to find h of n, you just need to take the inverse z transform. So h of z, you need to take the inverse z transform to get h of n. So either you can use the long division method or the partial fraction method. And since nothing is mentioned, you can assume that the signal is a causal signal. So by considering the causality, uh, so this is uh, h of z is h of z uh, by yeah h of z uh, is is written can be written as z into z plus 2 divided by z plus 1 z plus 1 into z minus 4 and by using partial fraction but third, we'll get uh, h of n as 1.24 raised to n u of n. So you can do the partial fraction expansion. So the coefficient will be 1.2 minus 0.2 minus 1 raised to n u of n. So here we are assuming that the signals are causal signals. So remember, uh, this is true uh, only if the initial conditions are zero. If the initial conditions are given, you need to take it 
appropriately. So I'll, I'll just quickly mention that and I'll stop with that. So is a transform of of y of n minus 1 is actually z inverse y of z if the initial conditions are 0 and if there are initial conditions you need to consider something like this y of minus 1. So it will be clear when I write the next signal y of n minus 2 becomes is a transform of y of n minus 2 becomes z raised to minus 2 y of z plus z raised to minus 1 y of minus 1 plus y of minus 2. So you can see that z raised to minus 2, z raised to minus 1, z raised to 0. So you will continue till z raised to 0. And if you will start with y of minus 1, it will continue up till the coefficient of z raised to 0. So what will be z transform of y of n minus 3? This will be z raised to minus 3 y of z plus z raised to minus 2 y of minus 1 plus z raised to minus 1 y of minus 2 plus z raised to 0 y of minus 3. Okay, so if uh, for example if y of n minus 2 uh, with zero initial conditions you just need to take you just need to take this at the same time if the initial conditions y of minus 1 or y of minus 2 is provided you need to consider uh, this as well okay so this is about uh, solving uh, a difference equation using uh, is a transform so please uh, work out a lot of uh, different problems to get more understanding on these topics thank you